Hello, welcome to this series about networking fundamentals. In this video you will learn everything important that you need to know about switches. Ok, so let's just start right away and let's answer the question what is a switch. And to put it very simple, a switch is just a network device, ok? And that's all you need to know. And my job here is done and the topic is exhausted. No, no, it would be very easy, very convenient of course, but there's much more to it as you can imagine. A router for example is also a network device, but there's a significant difference between those two, between a router and a switch. An access point is also a network device, but also much different with much different purpose than a switch or a router for example. And there are many other different network devices and about most of them I will record another separate video, so make sure to subscribe and watch them too. But for now let's just focus on a switch. So we already know it is a network device, right? And what's very characteristic for switches is that they work on a layer 2 of OSI model. Now if you don't know what is an OSI model, well you better learn it if you really care about networking, because everyone will be always referring to this, ok? And you just need to know the OSI model by heart. So in the middle of the night if I wake you up, you have to know it, ok? So make sure to learn it, make sure to memorize it. But also don't worry too much, I will now explain to you all you need to know at the moment and what is the flow of the data traveling across the network, because that's what an OSI model is in general, this is a reference model in networking that explains how the data is traveling across the network. Ok, so a switch is a layer 2 network device, in comparison to a router which is a layer 3 network device. Routers work with IP addresses and switches usually do not. Layer 2 in the OSI model means that we work with MAC addresses, which stands for Media Access Control, and it is a physical address. Also, if we want to stick to the proper terminology, on the layer 2, the data link layer, the data that we send is called a frame. And on the layer 3, the network layer, the one with IP addresses, it's called a packet. A frame is technically not a packet, a frame is what switches work with. Now what you have to understand is that when the data is being sent, it moves down the OSI layers. At layer 3 it becomes a packet, which contains an IP address and therefore an IP header. And I will also create a separate video only about IP addresses and IP header, because it's super fascinating and super important to know. Ok, but now back to the topic, so when the data is being moved from layer 3 to layer 2, it becomes a frame. And what it means in practice is that this frame now contains the MAC address. So we can also say that this frame at layer 2 also contains a packet encapsulated when traveling across the network. Then it will reach the destination, it will be decapsulated and the IP header will be restored. Ok, so I briefly described how the flow of the data traveling across the network works. Now back to the MAC address, MAC address is a physical address and IP address is a logical address. Now we're focusing on switches, so we only talk about MAC addresses. You should also know that MAC addresses are unique. They are burnt into the network interface card during manufacturing and they are also 6 bytes long, which gives us 48 bits and additionally they are written in hexadecimal. So it gives us more than 280 trillion possible addresses. Wow, this is really a lot. First three bytes in the MAC address are called OUI, which stands for Organizationally Unique Identifier. And this part, the first half of the MAC address is always the same for the vendor. It will tell us which company has made the device, for example Cisco, Intel and so on. And the other part, the other half is vendor assigned, which will be unique per device made by that vendor. Switches store the MAC addresses they learn in a MAC table, or how it's sometimes called a CAM table. It contains the list of all learned MAC addresses and the corresponding physical ports they are connected to. The switch will automatically learn the MAC address from a device connected to it. Now if a switch is asked to send data to a destination MAC address that it doesn't know yet, or in other words, if it doesn't know where the device is, it will send the data to all other ports connected to it and that's called flooding. Ok, so now as you have a bit more knowledge about the topic, we can get back to the question what is a switch and answer it a bit more precisely now. So a switch is a network device that works on layer 2 of the OSI model and therefore it works with the MAC addresses. But as you may have noticed, I said that switches usually work with MAC addresses. Usually because we can also have a layer 3 switches which can work with IP addresses. And they are usually more expensive as well. 
Okay, so now the question you might have is why do we even have the layer 3 switches? And if a switch can be both layer 2 and layer 3, why would we even consider buying a router? If a router is only a layer 3 device and a switch can be both layer 2 and layer 3, if a switch could theoretically work with everything, with all layers, right, maybe, it would be a magical device, right? Well, not really, because a switch, as the name suggests, it's made for switching. And even if it can do routing, even if a switch can work with IP addresses, it will never do it as good as a router does. We use routers to handle more complex routing. If we are using routing in switches, we do that because we just need to route traffic locally in a private network. And a switch is simply enough for that basic routing. So a layer 3 switch can do this simple routing, which will make the internal communication faster. So when we need to route traffic locally between VLANs, we can use a layer 3 switch for that. Okay, and now I mentioned VLANs, what is this? So a LAN, as you already know from my previous video, of course, not from anywhere else, a LAN is a local area network, a private internal network formed by using a switch. So a switch connects all of the network devices in the office, for example, and that forms a LAN, a local area network. And now a VLAN is a virtual local area network. And what's that? What's the difference? Very simply, it's just a way to divide one physical network into multiple logical, smaller, isolated networks. For example, imagine you have your private LAN network in the office. And if there are many devices, it will be much easier and much more efficient to divide them into these virtual networks. So on a switch, you can create, let's say, VLAN 1, where you put only computers, VLAN 2, where you put only smartphones, VLAN 3, where you put only the access points, and so on. And it can be also VLAN 10, 20, 30, VLAN 100, 200, or whatever. It doesn't really matter. And in real life, Usually there are many VLANs created, so that everything can be organized in a nice way. But if you're more interested about how it really looks like and how to configure it, then subscribe to my channel and watch out for the configuration, practical videos from a lab environment. I will show you how to configure that and also many other more advanced topics as well. Okay, so the most important that you should remember from this video is that a switch is a layer 2 network device that works with MAC addresses and that the data here is called a frame. And this is all you need to remember about switches as a beginner. But there are other really fascinating topics as well, also related to switches such as ARP, this is address resolution protocol, which is about how switches learn which MAC address corresponds to a particular IP address. And a spanning tree protocol, which is literally a switch protocol used to prevent switching loops. Super interesting and super important. And the next two lessons will be just about these two topics, so make sure to subscribe and watch them too. Alright, so that's it for today. Let me know in the comment if you have any questions regarding this topic, or if you would like me to explain anything else that you find interesting. Okay, make sure to subscribe to like this video and see you in the next one. Bye bye.